The question is, could you do an example on the calculation of bending stress in the beam? In this video, I will consider a non-symmetric I-beam, and I'll explain exactly what that means in a second. This is the problem that I have selected here. You might recognize this problem from another video. Here, our focus is on the calculation of the bending stresses. We have a simply supported beam subjected to a point load, a concentrated moment, and a uniform load. The bending moment diagram for this problem is given to us. The cross section of the beam is this. So why do I call this a non-symmetric I-beam? If you look at this uh, cross section carefully, you see there is one vertical line of symmetry. That is this line right there, right? So that's where I place my y-axis. But there is no horizontal line of symmetry here. That is why I call this a non-symmetric I-beam. We know the centroid is supposed to lie on lines of symmetry if there are ones. So there is one line of symmetry, which is the y-axis, and therefore the centroid must be on that line. But we don't know exactly where that is in the y-direction. In other words, we don't know where to place this z-axis, which is supposed to be the neutral axis, right? the neutral axis must pass through the centroid. So this is the problem where the first step would be to find the location of the centroid, which we will do in the next slide. But first we note that the maximum bending moment in the beam is 35 kilonewton meter. The maximum bending stresses go with the maximum bending moment, and therefore we'll be using this value in the calculation of the bending stresses. So let's take this value and perform the calculation in the subsequent slide. But we also note that this value is a positive quantity, all right? You see that this is a positive bending moment, right? And this has implications too. First, let's try to understand what's going on here from within the framework of the bending theory. We noted that the maximum bending stress is a positive quantity. If you recall, according to the sign convention, this is the positive direction for the bending moment. And therefore, if I take a small segment of the beam at point D, this is how the bending moments are acting at the ends of the little segment, right? Therefore, we have a compressive stress above the neutral axis and tensile stress below the neutral axis. Furthermore, we note from the bending theory that the bending strain, which is a normal strain in the x direction, epsilon xx, varies linearly, like shown here. And therefore, the bending stress also varies linearly, like shown over here, right? Both of these quantities are zero at the uh, centroid or neutral axis. So this is the maximum uh, compressive bending stress, and this is the maximum tensile bending stress. Because this cross-section is not symmetric about the z-axis, these two quantities are not the same. They are different in magnitude. We use the flexion formulas to calculate the value. So the maximum bending, the maximum compressive bending stress would be mc1 multiplied by zz, where c1 is this distance. m, of course, will be m max. And then the maximum tensile bending stress would be mc2 times izz where M again is the maximum bending moment of 35 kilonewton meter, but C2 is this distance. Now, IZZ in these two formulas um, is the second moment of inertia about the z-axis. So before we can calculate these stresses, you can see we have to do two things first. First, we need to find where the uh, centroid is, right? And second, we need to find the second moment of inertia about the z-axis which is going to pass through the centroid. The calculation of the centroid and the calculation of the second moment of inertia have been covered in another topic, and therefore I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I'll leave uh, all the details here so you can follow. This slide has details on the calculation of the centroid. The approach taken here is to follow the approach for a composite section. You take this cross-section, divide this into three rectangles. Rectangle 1, which is the top flange, rectangle 2, which is the web, and rectangle 3, which is the bottom flange. Just for the purpose of finding the centroid, we're going to measure the y-coordinate from this line right there, the top uh, part of the beam. So y-bar here is the distance from this top line to the centroid of the uh, cross-section. 
Now you can follow the steps here. So you get a value of 176.7 millimeters for Y bar. The second major task in solving the problem is finding the second moment of inertia about the z-axis. And you might recall this equation uh, applicable to composite sections. And this equation is based on the parallel axis theorem. And here IIC is the uh, second moment of inertia about the centroidal axis for that particular subsection I. AI is the area of the subsection I. YI bar is the distance of the centroid of the subsection from the global Z axis. You also might recall that the second moment of inertia for a rectangular cross section about the centroidal axis is 112 BD cubed, where B is the dimension parallel to the axis, D is the depth of the beam. So let's use the same subdivision that we have used in the calculation of the centroid, which is to divide this cross section into three rectangles the top flange, the web, and the bottom flange. So here's a further expansion of this equation. I have grouped the IICs together, and then I have grouped all the area corrections together. Now here are my numbers. Uh, the details are fairly easy to follow, but let me just go over a couple of these numbers. Uh, each of these uh, terms has 1 over 12 as a fraction, common fraction, so I pull that out of the uh, bracket here. All right. So for the first sub-area, uh, B is the dimension parallel to the axis, that'll be 0.2, so that's what I have over here. And D is the depth of that uh, little subsection. That'll be this dimension right there, or 50 millimeter, 0.05 cube, right? So the other I's are similarly defined. Let's look at the details of A1 times Y1 bar squared. A1, of course, is 0.2 multiplied by 0.05, so that's what I have over here. And the distance to the centroid of that little uh, sub-area from the z-axis would be this distance, right? So that'll be 0.1767 meter minus half the thickness of this uh, flange, which is uh, 0.025. So that's what I have over here. So you square that. All right, so when it's said and done, we have a value of 0 0.6108 times 10 to the minus 3 meter to the power of 4 for i. Now we can go ahead and calculate the maximum bending stresses. Here's a summary of the values we calculated for the relevant parameters. Here are the details, which are fairly straightforward, so I'll let you follow. So we calculate the maximum compressive bending stress to be 10.13 megapascal, and the maximum tensile bending stress to be 12.8 megapascal. Because of the fact that the cross-section is non-symmetric about the z-axis, these two values are not the same. Tensile stress is a little bigger than the compressive stress.